Hey everybody, Scout Crafty here again. It's Wednesday and we're having a little bit of a heat wave here. Just a little one. I know a lot of you guys are dealing with uh, a lot worse, especially out in uh, West Coast. I know my buddy John Crane, at the, you know, over there. <laughs> it's been rough over there in Washington and stuff, but I know we're running through it, but that's summertime, right? But that's why we cut the videos a little bit shorter. I uh, tend to do a little more projects. I can get away from being in the the, sh the hot shop, and so that's the way you got to. You always keep moving forward. You just got to do something, even if it's something small. But today we got a couple things planned. First of all, uh, wanted to talk about uh, uh, one of our great subscribers the other day said, "Hey, why don't you you know represent uh, some of the you know the army?" And I said, "You know what? You're absolutely right." So I went out and I bought uh, flags for every one of the branches of the United States. And uh, today we're representing the United States Army. And for a lot of you out there, I know a lot of you are Army vets or like me, you're, my father was in the Army and, uh, you know, because uh, the Army had a big draft and during the uh, World War II in Korea and also Vietnam. So uh, some of you have parents that, or, you know, fathers that were served in the Army and, uh, so today we're going to uh, give a tribute to the Army. It's our largest branch of the military. Uh, it was founded 14 June 1775, and uh, they're going strong, and they've been uh, doing a great job. You know, I, I know my dad always talked very highly of it. I'm sure a lot of your fathers, or if you were in the Army, you, you speak very highly of of uh, serving and, and what you learned and what you brought back and the experiences. So that's always great. So uh, hats off to you gentlemen uh, uh, who have served in the Army and also ladies, if any of you have. And if your parents or a friend or relative have. So uh, today we support the Army and we're going to go through all the branches uh, as I uh, hoist them up on that great flagpole I'm enjoying so much. Um, next up, want to talk a little bit about, uh, I know some of you say, look, every time you show me something, I go, I have to go out and buy, <laughs> you know, because you say, I know it looks, I make it look probably better than it is or something. You say it's almost like a commercial, right? But I want you to know I fall victim to the same thing. I go, I go on some YouTube channels. I see some guys have this fantastic stuff and, and I want it. And uh, that's what we're going to talk about right now, now. A couple months back, a good friend of mine by the name of James, you know him as Time Flies in the Shop, his channel. He has a great channel. Well, James, was uh, he always comes across some great tools and things like that. And he was doing a, uh, a restoration on a, uh, a saw, an Atkins saw that he had. And I, I fell in love with it. And I said, I have to have one. So I started doing some research on Atkins Tool Company their saw company. And let me tell you, Atkins was a top of the line saw company. In fact, their saws are very highly collectible today. And uh, some of the better saws you can find were made by the Atkin Atkins company, Atkins. <laughs> anyway, it was Elias C. Atkins. 1855, he, uh, he started his company and, and all kinds of saws he made. But the interesting one that James showed me that I had to have, and I had to go out and find one, was the Series 500, but I have the 100th anniversary model from 1955 around there. Let me show you how cool is this saw. And here it is, and what a beautiful saw this is. And you can see here, let me see if you can see it here. You see it says Atkins, 100th anniversary, and it was they were made in Indianapolis, Indiana. And uh, this one here is known as the 500 series saws. And uh, they made them in a wood handle and they also made them for the anniversary model and a couple others. They made them in this acrylic handle, which was uh, tinted like a yellowish type. Uh, and it is just a, a beautiful saw. I, I fell in love with it when I saw James's model. I said, wow. Now, obviously this is, you know, it's been used. It's got some scuffing and some, some marks and things like that. So we're going to clean it up now. I'm not going to show you the full restoration process because James did such a fantastic job on it. I'm going to do exactly like he did. You know what I mean? There's no, you can't change a great job like he did. So we're going to polish this out with some plastic polish. My, uh, plastic. Dex Meguiar's. We're going to clean up the uh, the screws. Obviously, these are nickel plated, but we're going to clean them up. Uh, same here, and 
and you can see on this side here they're dulled out but we'll clean up the handle it's got some scuffs we'll buff them out with the plastic polish and we're going to go over this here with the flitz just like james did it his came out great i want mine to come out like that and the beautiful thing is that this saw is like i said it's a very collectible saw and uh, it make a great display. So I just love the cross hatching of, uh, of how they did that. So we're gonna make sure we keep all that. But the, uh, the nice thing is because it's so hot today, I'm going to do this upstairs in the air conditioning. This is one of those things that don't make a lot of dust or dirt. And you could do something like that indoors. I'm going to enjoy myself, watch a little TV, do this upstairs. And we'll show you what it looks like when it's done. Now, here's a funny story. We started to get a real heavy wind and thunderstorm blowing in. And I, I ran out to take down the flags. And I was lowering the flags. And I thought to myself, boy, this pole would make a fantastic lightning rod. And uh, <laughs> needless to say, I, I really double-timed it to get those flags down and in the house before I got electrocuted okay, by a strike. Okay, that thunder shower is really cooling things off. It's already down to uh, 80 degrees, so it really cooled things off a lot. But it's uh, it's nighttime now, so but it's still raining. And uh, one thing I want to tell you about is, uh, I don't know if you've ever gone to Home Depot or Lowe's or any of the big box stores, Around the paint section, they always have something called, well, in Home Depot, they used to call it oops, O-P-P-S, or oops, you know, like a mistake. And uh, it's usually a little rack set up by the cashier or the uh, paint mixing booth at, at these uh, big box stores. And what it is, is what, uh, people that um, have paints mixed uh, to a certain color and they're not satisfied with the color, they bring it back and then they say, I don't like this color and, and there's nothing you could do. They have to give them a the refund. And then they sell the paint at a drastically reduced price. Now, I don't know. I'm, I'm sure a lot of you know about this, but if you don't, next time you're in Home Depot, Lowe's, one of the big box stores, go to the uh, where they mix the paints and ask them, you know, do you have the uh, any paints that uh, mistakes or mistake uh, rack or something and and look over there. Sometimes you'll find some really good deals. And I have found I a lot of the paints I use came from there. In, in fact, uh, my uh, Scalcrafter Red I, I picked up from there. It's uh, normally, they don't sell anymore. It was like a half pint. But uh, I bought that. It was like a dollar fifty something. So you get really good prices. Let me show you this one paint I, I just picked up. I always make it a habit to go by there and to, to take a look at the, uh, at the paints. Now, I picked this up. And the first thing you'll look at, there's usually a little paint a blotch on there and that's the color that's going to be in the can because you know after they mix it they take and tap it on top and so that's going to be the dried color it's almost like a hunter green i said that'd be perfect for me because i want to do the inside of some cabinets things like that and so look at the price i paid for this i paid two dollars and fifty cents but look at the original price it was uh 21.98 that's over eighty dollars a gallon. I mean, I, I'm looking at this paint, and it says it's a one coat, flawless finish, or whatever. But as I was looking at, it, I'm saying, how special is this paint that they could charge uh, eighty dollars plus a gallon for? You know, I'm I don't know. I've, I, have you ever used this type of paint? I mean, come on, it, paint. <laughs> at what point did paint skyrocket like this? But anyway, check out that. Uh, that oops or mistake area by the paint preparation uh, booth. Okay, we are calling this project done and uh, and it, it took a couple hours but you know the couple things you have to remember here remember this cross hatching that was put on these saws were done with probably some kind of fiber wheel or something like that and you cannot use a fiber wheel or anything that's going to take that off or disrupt them because you can see how nice they look on there right and uh, there we go much better like this you know you got to get the, the light just right to get this up the handle came out just beautiful you know it's uh it's almost crystal clear now polished out got rid of a lot of the scuffs now here's one thing i want to discuss the the uh the screws that hold on these uh the handle to the saw is made of brass okay they're brass screws and they're nickel plated that problem is the nickel plating like i always tell you nickel is a is an inferior coating and they always wind up pitting and flaking and stuff so you have to make the decision when you get your so you know if you want to keep it nickel you can only lightly polish it and it will come out not looking so good but i take it right down to the brass because i like that look and it's super shiny you can see how nice that looks 
And same thing with the medallion. The medallion is a nickel coating. I take it off because I don't, you know, you can't have half and half, you know, either. It's all or nothing with that. But I do like the way it looks on there. Uh, the saw, you know, to stop a lot of the fingerprints, I did use the, the same ingredients that James did. I used the flits on the metal. I used the, uh, my plastic polish. I used McGuire's and then, uh, buffed out the screws. And then I gave everything a coat of, uh, the wax I use, uh, and the Carnuba wax. But you could see here how beautiful this saw is with these hatch marks on here it's just uh just lovely i'll make a beautiful display piece you know it's not something i would obviously use i have so many saws i wouldn't pick a hundredth anniversary saw to use but this is just beautiful isn't it i love it and i want to thank james for uh for, i never would have knew about this if it wasn't for for him finding one and restoring so it. in closing i hope you enjoyed seeing that very rare saw and uh it is a beauty, isn't it? I mean, that is just meant to hang on a wall somewhere and just admire, you know, the craftsmanship of, the, of days gone by. And I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks very much for tuning in. Congratulations to all you Army veterans and everybody who uh, knows somebody or anything in the Army. Take care now. Bye-bye. <laughs>